Bowl are 6-0 and and about to light up the Wells Fargo Center. Center in Philadelphia. It's time for the world's fastest form of football. Tonight, the Philadelphia Soul hosts the Orlando Predators. Hello, everyone. I'm Lou Tilly, along with Tom Goodhines. And Tom, these are two teams that are more near in their records than three and three and six and zero oh would indicate this year. Well, we know that for Orlando, at least the last two games, they've been a little snake bit with some overtime losses. But we know that the talent is definitely there. And obviously in the first game, it was a close game. We knew there was going to be a close fight down to the wire. Believe me, the coaching staff's not taking this team lightly. Let's talk about that. First game of the year down in Orlando, the Soul got out of there with what was their most narrow win of the year. It's 70 to 63. They dominated all the offensive stats, Tom. Why was this game so close? Well, you got to also remember, too, that Carlos Martinez was hurt basically on the first extra point. And even a little bit of the kickoff for us that obviously put us in a little bit of a defensive mode because all the kickoffs to Orlando were received around midfield, if not better. So the defense had to really buckle down and be able to play some solid defense. And then obviously the, the offense is beginning to gel and gelled at the right time at the end of the game there with Ryan McDaniel making a couple of key touchdowns to get this one in our favor. Including a touchdown with 12 seconds left, flat on his back, one-handed, a deflected ball that gave the soul that win and sent them on this great streak there at 6-0. The two quarterbacks in that game both had sensational games and both have continued to have sensational years. Rodaball had 422 yards in that game and Randy Hippert, 20 for 25, continued to rampage after that at a 75% clip. But, Tom, he was injured last week in an overtime loss. He won't be the starting quarterback tonight. It'll be Rodaball against an old familiar face, Bernard Morris. Well, it, it's unfortunate for Orlando and their offense because of Randy's hip injury on his elbow. And also for the coaching staff, we had to basically look at trying to com go against a different style quarterback. You know, Randy's a little bit more of a pocket passer with Bernard Morris, tonight starter. He's a little bit more of a scrambler. So watch for the linebackers, especially Joe Gooseby, to be able to play a good game tonight to keep Morris in the pocket. We play eight men on a side in arena football, and there are three key receivers, as you can imagine, for each team. And the Philadelphia trio, Tom, has just been sensational. All three of these guys have kind of zigged and zagged with big games this year. I think a lot of that is being able to give Dan those options to be able to go to any array of the receivers. It could have been SK, it could be McDaniel, it could be Thomas, it could be Boyce. That variety and being able not to lock in on one guy has made things a little bit easier for Dan this year and really helped his confidence. Marco Thomas, a newcomer to the lineup, of course, last year's wide receiver of the year. The Soul versus Orlando. It figures to be a really good one, and it's coming your way next, right here on the Comcast Network. The Philadelphia Soul trying to stretch. The Philadelphia Soul trying to stretch their season-long winning streak to seven games tonight at the Wells Fargo Center as they take on the Orlando Predators. Hello, everyone. Lou Tilly and Tom Goodhines from the Wells Fargo Center. The Soul come in at 6 and 0. Oh, Orlando, a deceptive 3 and 3. They've lost their last two games by identical scores in overtime 56 to 55 both times. But they have not beaten the Soul, period, since 2011. Orlando won the toss, and they will kick it away. And we're underway as it sails through the goalposts and out of play. Tom Goodhines, best start for your team since 2008 when Seoul won it all. And one of the things too, Lou, we notice about winning the toss or winning the flip, Seoul has been very good at that this year, and, and this is the first time they had actually lost the flip in about five games. So we'll be able to get a chance to see the offense right away, and uh, maybe that has a little bit of a difference because the defense has been usually on the field first. Boy, the offense has had a great year. They lead the AFL in scoring at almost 60 points a game, and they posted a season-high 70 points in the first game of the year against this same team that they see tonight in Orlando. On fourth down, it's Marco Thomas, who had one of the league's best games of the year in that win, 70-63, to 63, with 154 receiving yards 
and 14 catches in that opening game win to start this new season. Starts it off for the Soul and a fresh set of downs outside of the 17. You see a lot of the big guys up front here, Lou. A lot of that success for this team and that Marco Thomas picking up that catch, just finding the space in the zone. Dan getting it out of his hands quickly, but the success for this offense has been the guys up front. That's Tivis, Breen, and Smith. Allowing a league low number of sacks so far this year. Rattle ball hit from behind. That ball is loose, and Johnny on the spot is Marco Thomas. I think the soul will keep possession, but there may be a penalty as Dan, I think, kicked the ball out of harm's way. Yeah, instead of diving on it, he kicked it out of the way, and that'll be a penalty. He can't do that, but Dan thought better than trying to dive on it and possibly get piled on and get injured. Kicked it and <laughs> went right to Marco in his hands but it will be a penalty against the soul. Our referee tonight is Scott Aronovitz. And here it is again. Dan hit from behind. And it looked like even Adam Smith, I'm not sure if he, when he brought the ball up, it actually hit Adam to knock it out of his hands. But that'll be a half a distance to the goal penalty from the spot. Offense, number five. Half the distance to the goal, lost it down, second down. Took a long time to make what was a rather obvious call. But the Soul will have second down and called about 21 yards now to pick up a first down. They'll have to cross midfield, but they'll have three downs to do it. And the AFL's best offense in action here. McDaniel heading long, the ball going that way to the sideline, but McDaniel was still heading upfield, the ball falls incomplete. Dan Rodaball has been like a machine every year since coming to Philly. Every year he finishes around 64% in completion, and that's where he stands right now on the season. His 422 yards in the opening game win against Orlando, 70 to 63, stands out as the most outstanding passing performance so far this season. Number five, big, tall, and strong. This is his 80th straight game played in the AFL. That's second best among active players in the Arena Football League. Third and long, and a bullet complete to Marco Thomas, and it still will be about six yards short of a fresh set of downs, but better and more manageable now on fourth down. It's a fourth down gamble brought to you by Foreman Mills. Stretch your bills with form and mills. Look like there might have been a face mask on the end of that. got the collar. Watch where the hand comes in from the side. He's going to spin it away. The Soul, the best in AFL football on fourth down conversions. They've converted 10 out of 14 this year. That's even better than their third down rate. Rot ball to throw for it and throwing long to the end zone and out of play. So the announcer's jinx goes against the soul, and on their opening drive, the Orlando force a turnover on downs. The ball will turn over to Orlando, and their offense will come out onto the field. See, on one of those spots with that throw with Dan, you know it's fourth down, you might as well try to squeeze it in there. Overthrowing and putting it out of bounds doesn't even give McDaniel a chance to even come up with it. So if you get it picked off, then it, it really doesn't hurt you in that situation. So Dan missing the target on that one. So our first look at Bernard Morris, who gets the start for the first time this year in place of Randy Hippert, who was the league's leading passing quarterback up until this point. And Morris goes to the end zone and no one home on first down. Morris, a big, tall, rangy wide receiver. We've seen the last few years playing for Les Moss in Jacksonville. 6'4", 225 pounds. Doesn't have the best release, Tom, but he's dangerous with his legs. A different kind of quarterback. And that's the thing that the sole defense is going to have to do is stay in their lanes. Do not give him those options to run the ball and pull it down because he does get a little anxious at times and will pull it down and be a threat. Second down and 10 for Morris, who throws quickly to the outside. That's complete, but for negligible gain. First completion for Morris on the evening. And that's 13. Big Lamarck Brown on the reception. Big target at 6'4", 225 pounds. Just but it's the two Tompkins who are the real receiving threats here, Brandon and Kendall, and they've combined for 76 catches on the young season. Just a quick out, Lou, but we were talking a little bit about in the pregame was those linebacker positions. That's Curtis Young playing the Mac, Joe Gooseby playing the Jack, and those guys are going to be key in keeping Morris contained. And that's Larry Brackens, the motion man, the uh, longtime sole wide receiver. 
Completion, though, uh, just at the chains, and it looks like it'll be a first down for Morris, who hooks up with Tompkins down to the 10-yard line, and it is a first down for Orlando. Brandon Tompkins on the reception, 5'10", 190 pounds. Has 35 receptions on the year, 431 yards, five touchdowns. Morris able to step into that pass and connect, Lou, and it's that kind of confidence early that can get him on a roll. And Bernard Morris, remember, is a quarterback that has gotten his team into the playoffs. Tompkins in motion, but the give is to their huge fullback, and he bulls all the way down to the three-yard line. That's Michael Simons, 6'4", 305 pounds, and has a pretty good idea of what to do with it down near the goal line. He's got some space, and you said it. He stays upright. you got to tackle the guy a little lower, bring him down, hitting him high, and you see Romain there try to give a shot at it, but Larico and Brian Robinson come over and bring the thump to bring him down. Yeah, James was spotting him 135 pounds. Second down at the three-yard line. Orlando trying to take the early lead. We're here in Philadelphia. Seoul had the ball on the opening drive. They were stopped on downs. The give is to the wide receiver. The ball is loose, and there's a scramble. You know, Orlando recovered it, but good penetration. Starts in the middle with JR. Justin Lawrence looking to get in there and strip. That ball is out, but unfortunately, Gooseby can't sneak in there. That's Terrence Moore, who's the starting Jack linebacker, but yeah. comes in on goal line situations. He caught a touchdown pass a year ago, but looks like he's new to running the ball, especially between the guards. So it brings up third and goal. Patrick Scott was also in there, but it appeared that maybe his knee was down. So if that was a uh, rule to turnover, that was definitely a challengeable play. Watch big Larry Brackens here. He's in motion. He's grabbed four touchdowns on the year, and they go that way. And Boogie, as they know him in Philadelphia, comes home with a touchdown. Sounds strange to be calling Larry Brackens and not say that it's a score for foods galore. That's what we do on soul touchdowns. That's Orlando grabbing the early lead after the turnover on downs. Gave them the ball at midfield. New kicker this week for Orlando. It's Reed, or rather Christian Reed. Replaces Mark Lewis, a veteran who was injured last week, along with Hippert and Greg Carr. It was a costly loss in overtime to Cleveland. Point is down, up, and well wide right. Well wide right. That means no good. So the soul at least dodged that bullet. 8.09 to go in the first at the Wells Fargo Center. You haven't seen this much all year. The Soul Trail, Orlando 6, the Soul coming to back. Soul Football on the Comcast Network brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. He's Tom Goodhines, the white haired guy is Ted Baxter. <laughs> How many guys you know that dye their hair white, Tom? One I'm guy. Not, I'm not one of them. One guy. Soul off schedule for maybe the first time all year in this perfect season so far. They get stopped on downs, they find themselves trailing. I tell you, it, Lou, it has probably something to do with that, the fact that they didn't win the toss and the offense had to start out. Usually it's been the defense starts the game, get, the offense has a little time to get things together on the bench and then pop in because the defense has made a stop early and got this thing rolling. And a confidence builder for quarterback Bernard Morris getting his first start of the season. Horrible kick after the mixed point by Christian Reed, doesn't even reach the 10 yard line before it hooks into the third row. Now remember, we don't know exactly what happened with the, the emergency kicker, because Mark, um, Mark is actually here for them. So and this the, Mark been Lewis the... is an all arena kicker for, for Orlando. He made the trip. So we knew he was here and they had to sign on today, the emergency kicker with Reed. And uh, this, this right there, unfortunately, it was just like the first game. We had a little trouble with the kicking game. Now it's Orlando that has the issues with the kicking game. Yeah, for those who didn't see the opening win by the Soul down in Orlando, 70 to 63, Carlos Martinez was lost on the first play of the game virtually, and the Soul had to go for two the rest of the way and had very little in the way of kickoffs. So a good field position, rod a ball to the air, has a receiver, Sean Colleen Omoko with a touchdown score for Foods Galore. And really, it's just a pattern there, Lou, that just finds him in the open. He cuts across the grain, across the field. 
Dan is able to read it immediately and drop it right in. Watch this one come right down to you in the living room. And SK is able to pull that one in easy. And you can tell here he isn't at full speed. He's got a little bit of a hamstring injury going on. But right there, showing no signs of that and getting the soul on the board. SK coming off his best game of the season in the win over Portland last week with 122 yards and three touchdowns. This time the kick is good by Freeburg. So that's the difference. We'll take a break. 6.50 to go in the first quarter. It's a score. Soul 7, Predators 6. Today, Pennsylvania lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians every day. Players must be 18 years and older. So the kicking game, the difference so far for the soul, Orlando doinked one, Freevert hit one and nails it off the back wall and now a problem. And Orlando will be pinned and tackled in their own end zone to start their next drive. You're talking about the difference on kickoffs, Lou. You can tell immediately how that can affect you. Hey, didn't get it cleanly off the net. That one goes down to the turf. Guess what? They're going to start at the two. Last week against Portland, we had a little bit of trouble getting the ball to the net and also just a dangerous kick returner with Portland First being able to get Portland some decent field position. But any team, that, if you can pin a team inside the five, it limits their playbook of what they can do to start a drive, which hopefully stalls them and turn it over on downs, get a quick turnover. Brandon Tompkins, who mishandled that, has been a dangerous returner this year. He has a couple of touchdowns, one off a field goal attempt, in fact. On first down, Morris has the receiver. There's a missed tackle, but not much damage done. Only about a five, six-yard gain on first down. For Orlando, you're talking about kickers, Tom, in a strange way. The loss of Martinez for you in the first game. You went out and found the guy, Tommy Freevert from your open tryout a couple of months ago, and he's just been sensational. Yeah, Lou Russo, our player personnel director, Clint Belzell, Phil Bogle, Derek Stingley, we all liked what we saw for sure, and we are able to bring him in, call him up quickly. Bernard Morris getting his first start of the year has always struck for a touchdown already, lobs a long ball in the direction of Tompkins, and a flag will fly as it looked like Romaine was hacking at him before the ball arrived. James Romaine on the coverage, pardon me, that's Lamarck Brown, the receiver, number 13. Pass interference, defense number 25. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Now, Lou, if you watch here, this is more of a product of the throw of Morris. Watch the trajectory of this thing, hanging, hanging up there. And Romaine, not knowing exactly when it's coming, he has to either make a decision. Yeah. If he had turned his head or at least caught a glimpse of it, he would have known that he wouldn't have had to do that. I got you. It's a good point. Minimal damage. It'll start from the 20-yard line on their side of midfield. It's a pitch to the motion man, and that's the big receiver we were talking about earlier, and he'll get up across midfield and down to the 22. After this game, the Florida feud will continue as the Soul go on the road to take on Jacksonville. They've had their struggles, but it's a tough place to play in the Shark Tank. And then a week later, they'll go down to Tampa to take on the Storm, and they'll stay in Florida for a week of bonding in the interim. And then they'll come home for the Boardwalk Bowl on the 30th. I'll be telling you about that a little bit later. Second and short, Morris lobs one for the corner, has a receiver, and has another touchdown to Brandon Tompkins. Nice touch on the throw from the tall quarterback who has experience, even though this is his first start of the season. Able to drop it down the chimney, Lou. Pushing it outside, Rico Stevens closing, but not there in time. Got the hand in a little bit late. If he tried with his left hand, it might have gotten a little bit closer, but Larico couldn't time that in time to get that, make it incomplete. Christian Reed, the emergency kicker who badly missed his first conversion and then hooked his following kickoff out of play, gets a second chance. Set, up, hits the upright, but bounces through this time, and it's good. Take him any way you can get him. The putt drops in the cup. So, in a wild first quarter, 3.57 to go. The Soul find themselves on the trail end and the tail end of the score. Orlando 13, Philadelphia 7. Bernard Morris stepping in for a guy, Randy Hippert, who was leading the league and on a record pace, picking up right where Hippert left off. It's being able to find the right passing angles, get the right pass patterns going, getting some 
confidence going early for Morris, and that's what Orlando is needed for a guy who hasn't started the games. Get him confidence early and get him on a roll. Stevenson has a chance for a return. And the kickoff was short, but in play this time. So Dan Rodaball and the sole offense will start at their eight-yard line. They're one for two in possession, stopped on downs on their opening possession of the game, one of the rare times this season. The Soul have the leading offense in the AFL at about 60 points a game and a leading point total in a single game when they beat this Orlando team 70-63 to in week one of the new 2015 AFL season. We play 18 regular season games before we head to the playoffs, and this is game seven, so we're past the one-third poll, as it were, in the AFL season. Rodaball will bring him out, probably has the most talented trio of receivers. And what would you expect with an AFL Hall of Famer uh, as your coach, the quarterback, former quarterback Clint Dozell. And that's his protege, Rodaball to the sideline, a well-thrown ball for a completion to SK. Kalina Moku, the Hawaiian out of Western Oregon University. Just methodic passing attack and the strategy of Clint Dozell and his, his um, play calling. It's an extension of the running game, those quick out passes, move the sticks, at least get it in a manageable second and short to set things up for a little bit more ability to tack down the field. Second and short, midfield is the 25 on the 50 yard arena football field layout. End zone's about eight yards deep, at least here in the Wells Fargo Center. They vary a bit around the league. Taggart is the fullback, stumbled at first and then got his feet again and that's not a bad gain, it's a first down. He bumped Boy. into, it looked like Tivis on the, on the, trying to get around that corner. And Tommy wasn't going to take any prisoners. Look at the penetration to push Tivis back into Taggart, but Taggart's still able to get the edge and get and pick up the first down. Compared to some of the fullbacks, quote unquote, in the AFL, Tommy looks kind of lean, Tom Goodhines, at 6'3", yeah. 275. Yeah, anytime you say 275 is lean, yeah. that gives you an idea of what that size looks like around the league. Marco Thomas, the speedy wide receiver, is the man in motion at the top of your screen. And there's some jumping, but a flag comes in late. And Thomas leaps up and makes the grab for a soul touchdown. It's a soul score for Foods Galore. 30 yards, run a ball to Marco Thomas. And here's the call. Defense number 90, not in a three point stance. Penalties decline. Touchdown. And that's part of the strategy, Lou, that, that the offense knew ahead of time that the depth of looking at the roster and some of that strategy and looking who Orlando brought, brought about knew that they're going to do a lot of two count, going on two to try to draw that defensive line off sides because they're, they're not very deep across the front. Austin Brown was offsides. It mattered not. Dan went through with the throw, and that was a beaut by Dan Rodeball, who's having his best year ever. Freebird is perfect again on the conversion, and the Soul have answered score for score, but they lead it by one. 138 to go. It's the Soul 14, Orlando 13. Soul.com. We're playing inside historic Boardwalk Hall on the night of May 30th, a 6 p.m. kickoff. As soon as this game's over, they're gonna pack this field up and ship it down there. Oh, is that right? They're gonna pack it right up because they got the two weeks lead in. We're obviously not home the next two weeks so they can get this field down there. And I'm, we're, you know, the entire team is excited about it. The whole field system, the netting, the whole bit. You got it. Everything's going down there and setting up down there and May 30th, uh, just can't wait to get down there. Of course, Tom is the expert in moving fields. You once set one up in Beijing for us for an all-star game not too was, long ago. It wasn't just me. There was a lot of people involved with making that happen for a sure. A lot yeah. of them, as I recall. It was, it was a great experience for sure. And like I said, you don't do something like that without it being a full team effort. Yeah, that was something. That was back in November of 2013 now. And uh, that new league uh, set to kick off in 2016. We'll be telling you more about that as we go along. Morrison company will start good field position at their 20. He pump fakes once, and that was a mistake. He's brought down from behind right about that the line of scrimmage. It's probably a split sack there, Lou, between Scott and Robinson. He, Morris pulled it down, a good coverage down the field. He could not get rid of it, so Scott and Robinson team up. Watch the pocket collapse. He pulls it down. The initial hit by Robinson, and then Scott jumps in as well. 
Number 25, James Romain, had good coverage down the field. He has been nothing short of sensational. And in fact, Clint Dozell was quoted in Philly.com this week as wondering why this guy hasn't been picked up by the other league. And I mean the NFL. He's that good. And there he is. Is that Romain? Hey, yeah. how about that on cue? Breaking up that pass right on cue. And the only knock against him is just that size, but he's got the instincts without question, the athletic ability. Watch him go in there knowing, get your hand on that arm, prevent him from pulling that in any way possible. Can't get a piece of the ball, grab the arm, does a great job there, and also Richardson coming in and almost getting the deflection. Romain, a record-breaking career just down the road at Delaware State. 5'8", maybe 170 pounds, but very aggressive. Leads the AFL with four interceptions this year and in pass breakups as well. There you go, and on that breakup, it'll bring third down for Orlando when we come back to start the second quarter. One quarter in the books, the 6-0 Soul. Lead Orlando 14-13. Back in the Wells Fargo Center, the Soul last year started 0-3, and, and they were chasing Cleveland the whole year, never quite got there. This year, they're trying to get to 7-0, but now you go on the road for two weeks in Florida. This is an important stretch to stay ahead of Cleveland. Absolutely, and it's staying focused and making sure that we're taking care of our own business and not looking at what others are doing. Cleveland two games back in the division. They went to the championship game a year ago. Morris on third down, throws complete, and even though that ball goes loose, uh, the receiver was forced, that was Larry Brackens, against the wall. That caused the contact, and it cannot cause a no, fumble. It would have been a fumble if, if Larry had gone there on his own. But there's the contact into the wall, then the ball comes out. If he went there on his own and it came loose, it would have been a free ball. So Bernard Morris, quarterback, picks up the third down conversion. He's now 6 for 8. That's 75% replacing the regular starter, Randy Hippert, who was 75.4% for the season, but is missing this game tonight. First and 10 from the 18, Morris to the air, sidearms it, and it's picked off! It's picked off! James Romain, number 25, now the league leader in interceptions, and now you see why he's getting the kind of praise that he does get. Well, you want to know, and having worked actually with Saya Burley when I was in Utah, he was now the offensive coordinator for Orlando. That's all he could talk about in pregame is, boy, 25 is having a great year for you guys. It's plays like this that make it stand out and makes offensive coordinators have that be your first words out of your mouth. As a matter of fact, I think he said that before he even said hi to me. Wow. <laughs> Tom, so, I think I picked up something in Morris's delivery on that throw that was different from every other one that he's made tonight. He kind of three-quarter side-armed that one, and it sailed just a little bit. And that's been the knock on him a, a little bit since he's been in the league, the big, tall quarterback out of Missouri. Well, usually, what's that caused by? It's usually the pressure up front that makes you have to adjust the, the arm angle. And bad and, footwork. And bad throw is the result of that. Rotter ball goes for it all, and the pump fake, and Marco Thomas can't quite hold on, but he may have been held at midfield. Now, a little bit of a stumble. that had to be a grab at some point from the defensive back during that route. Both team fouled on the play. Holding, offense number 24, pass interference, defense number 23. Hmm. The foul's offset. Replay, first down. That's yeah, something you don't see very often. Offsetting penalties, offensive holding, uh, offsets the defensive hold by Eric McIntosh. First quarter stats for Dan Rodeball. Take that one you just saw off the books. Dan was 5 for 7 as well for 97 yards. So right on pace for the great season that he's having. Overall, the leading passer in the AFL with the major statistics considered. Although Hippert had a better completion rate coming in. Pump fake again from Rodeball, and then I think he's hit as he throws, and it falls incomplete. And he's mad about something. Well, it was clear that he got hit from the edge that couldn't step into that throw. It was the pump fake, and then looking to try to find McDaniel down the field, but around the edge, and he gets hit as he's throwing the ball. He gathers puts the hit on Dan and it obviously affects that. Jeremy Gethers, a defensive end out of UNLV. Not so big, but very quick. He takes his spot as Rodabaugh looks at second and long. Quick slant to Ryan McDaniel. 
First gets catch into the, the scorebook. Yeah, he was kind of held in check last week, but we now understand he was double teamed most of the night against Portland. Well, that happens to you, and usually when that happens, you free up things for other guys. And this time we're going to try to look to see if he can get a little bit more involved here, especially in this first half. Get them all rolling. McDaniel's the biggest of the starting trio of receivers for Philadelphia at 6'3", 200 pounds, and one of the leading receivers and one of the great stories in the league in just his second year. He's the motion man right now, and that's where Radabaugh looks, but he is corralled and thrown to the ground before he has a chance to pick up his second catch. It'll be a first down for the soul. Yeah, that wasn't even close, and he actually jumped the route. He jumped the route and it threw it a little bit high there and might have been able to just let that one go if Ryan was going to pull that one in. It was going to be... Defense number 23, 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. A circus catch if he had pulled that in. Once again, the Soul go on the road next week at Jacksonville and then down to Tampa before coming back to Atlantic City, May 30th for the Boardwalk Bowl. Just down the road, there's a concert attached to it, some special packages in conjunction with the hotels and casinos down there in Atlantic City. Give us a call at 888-789-SOUL. Soul on the move, cross midfield. After being stopped on their opening drive, they've been perfect two for two since. Trying to make it three for three, Rada ball. Bullets, one to the end zone, what a catch by Kalina Moku. What a grab by the flying Hawaiian. You're not gonna see a better catch than that, Lou. Watch him just stretch out with one hand and just pull that in and know exactly where he is on the field to reach across the end zone. You're not gonna get better than that, diving across in the end zone sk is just i tell you what a great locker room guy and and even better here on the field as well freeverts extra point is good what a series for the soul to start the second quarter from south philly they've moved in front of orlando we'll be back with philly on top 21 to 13. had trailed in this one six to nothing but have stormed back and they take advantage of the first turnover forced in the game by Super DB James Romain at the goal line and march all the way up the field to score on Sean Kailana Muko's second touchdown of the night. Now on the onside kick, trying to catch Orlando by surprise. It looks like the ball may have touched the sideline, and yeah, Orlando will get possession inside the 10. Yeah, remember the rule is anytime the ball on a kick hits the wall, the side, it's a dead ball. And that one did not go the necessary 10 yards, hit the wall before it reached the Outside. 10. Kicking team number 21, penalties decline. First down, Orlando. And offsides, even if it was recovered, so it didn't matter either way. But watch, it doesn't get there. Had that stayed in bounds and had gone the 10 yards, it would have been sole ball. Well, I know that's something you really, you and Clint and Derek and uh, Phil worked on all week during practice was uh, special teams, particularly the onside kicking. Yep, so remember the offsides too. So not only did they the get the ball at the nine, now you got to add the penalty on to get it down to the four. Well, this uh, Morris, after his first shaking moment in replacement of regular starter Randy Hippert, Morris had been six for eight and then threw a bad interception. This is a good way to get confidence back, starting with the ball at your opponent's four yard line. Morris straight back under pressure now. He'll start to scramble and is taken down and contained by Goosby, the excellent Jack linebacker, but there's a flag down in the Orlando backfield. Good coverage down inside the goal line to force Morris. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty. To Replay tuck it. first down. There's a hold call against the center, Ryan Case, so that'll back him up. Not always a bad thing in arena ball. They'll take the ball out near the 15-yard line. First and goal. Orlando in the red zone, middle of the pack. Number six in the stack, 27 scores and 33 tries. One of them a field goal. Philadelphia is the best in AFL football inside that red zone and one of the best on defense inside the red zone. Philly right now with Justin Lawrence on the nose, big number 99 in the game. Brian Robinson, a stalwart and a standard out there for four years for Philadelphia, number 12. Now it's a different look here. Is now they got Goosby at Mac. Oh, I see, yeah. Oh, no, they switched it back. They moved that back into another formation. So they got Young still at Mac. Morris with a lob pass into the end zone, and it's good for a touchdown. Good touch by the young quarterback who hits Larry Brackens, the former sole wide receiver, for his second touchdown of the night. 
He's a guy that you look for in that red zone. In that time, Romain was not able to turn the head around in time to make a better play on that one. Put the arm across, but Morris knew, get it up to the big guy. Just a hair short there for Romain. Romain on the coverage, that's a big target there. And Larry Bracken, 6'5", 230 pounds. That was a pretty well thrown ball. Yeah, just in time it right. That was down within reach of Romain there. He just did not get the head around to see the ball coming in. Christian Reed, this has been an adventure on placements, and this one is pure, knocks it right through the middle. So he's starting to find his stroke. And here we go, stroke for stroke, serve for serve. We're on serve. Philly will have the ball when we get back. They lead Orlando 21 to 20. Can't have a long memory when you're a defensive back in this league, can you? Romain makes the turnover, then comes right back in. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, you got to kind of put that, you got to have amnesia both ways, on the good plays, but also on the bad plays, being able to come back and still fight for it. On that play, you know, Romain wasn't looking around, and if he had actually just turned his head a little bit, he might have been able to get a hand on that one. Six foot five receiver matched up against the five seven DB. Chip Kelly would say big meets small. Then again, Kelly drafted a 5'11 wide receiver in the first round. But that's another story. That one was very short there, Lou. You see Larico almost, almost came up and had to scoop it up. It barely reached the, the five-yard line. Yeah, that, uh, they, I don't, I, did they fly? We don't know if they flew Christian Reed in at the last minute. Their regular kicker, Mark Lewis, was here for the trip. So this really is an emergency fill-in at placement. This this could have been a guy that played semi-pro ball back with Vince Papali on the Sandlots, for all we know. But it's been a problem, and the kicking game is the difference in the game as Reed missed his first extra point. Freevert has been perfect. Sole lead at 21-20. They have the ball, 9-10 to go in a wild, and well-played first half for the most part. Rot a ball. Ooh, to the sideline, and SK was not looking, and the defensive backs from Orlando were all over it but it falls incomplete. And Clint is basically showing Dan where his read should have been. And that time it looked like SK was already turning up field by the time that Dan was ready to turn and fire. McDaniel looked like he had some opening on the far side. Second down to 10 at the nine yard line, 41 yards away from the end zone. Dan Rottebaum comes in leading the league with 40 touchdown passes. Has three already, 30 yards to Thomas, 30 to Kalayana Muko, and 25 to SK as well, who makes the grab this time on the near sideline, but short of the first down will bring up third down. And that's what they were anticipating on the last play. Gets him some yardage, makes it third and manageable. Just a quick out, Dan, three-step. In the opening game win down in Orlando, 70 to 63, all three starting wide receivers for Philadelphia crossed the 100-yard mark, including Kylie Amuku, had 118 on six catches, McDaniel had 150 on 10, and Thomas won 54 on 14 catches. What a night that was. Dan pump fakes, throws down the sidelines, and has Kalina Moku, his third touchdown, a first half hat trick for HK, and a sole score for Foods Galore. It's so deceptive with SK and what he's able to do. You watched him on a couple of quick outs, but guess what? Let's sneak him down on the other sideline. Dan eyes him as soon as he's got that yard or two. Dan puts it right in front of him. SK able to reel that one in and he's been having a great couple of weeks of football and right there finds the end zone again and you said his hamstrings a little gimpy a little bit <laughs> it wasn't moving around the, the in the, the most comfortable situations in pregame look out when he comes back freevert punches it through soul 28 orlando 20 you're watching the soul football from the comcast network um, five catches, 102 yards, three touchdowns of over 25 yards. Well, that's so, what's so great about this offense and Coach Dalzell, not only his Hall of Fame career as a quarterback, but his ability to, to analyze the defense, notice weaknesses, and, and take advantage of them, putting the receivers in the spot that they need to. If they're going to key on to McDaniel, we'll slide it over to Thomas. They're going to key on Thomas, they'll slide it over to SK. And SK, the last two games, has been a beneficiary of that philosophy. Freevert will kick it long. Tompkins will try to play it, but nope, through the uprights into the seats, not returnable. Dan Rattleball, who had the season high night in the opening game win over Orlando with 422 yards, is back on track for that again tonight. 
164 yards total, 9 of 13, four touchdowns, no interceptions, with seven minutes to play in the first half. Uh, Florida trip there, Lou, heading down next Friday. Yeah, Jacksonville, Jacksonville. Tom, have they, have they gotten it back together again? They had a really rough they're start. Always, they're always dangerous, Lou. I mean, that's not a team that you just take lightly. I know the one in five record, but there's just way too much talent on that one, and we'll definitely be prepping for them uh, no differently. Oh, and a sack as Morris hesitates in the pocket. Brian Robinson with his third sack of the season. And almost a safety. And that might even be one and a half if he split the one earlier. That time just comes in, beats his blocker, pulls him down. You keep him in that pocket. Like I said, that secondary helps out. But if you keep Morris in there, you know, it'll be guys like Robinson who will come in and tee up and do some eating. Yeah, it sets up uh, what could be the breakaway point of the night for Philly if their defense can s stop Jacksonville on downs or a turnover. Second and long, shadow of their goal line. Morris flicks it out. It's incomplete. He sidearmed that one, but the ball looked like it was there, intended for Lamarck Brown. Another big third down. That was just going to say at the beginning of this drive, Lou, this could be a turning point. You know, how the soul is able to, if they're able to get the ball back to the offense and put another score on, remember Orlando will get the ball coming out of the half. So a definitely a key possession for the soul defense here. Clock ticking down. It's a rolling clock in arena football until the final minute of each half. Five and a half, 520 or so to go. Third down, let's call it 14. They need to get the ball across the 15 for a first down. Jacksonville will start at their own one yard line. That's Brackens in motion. Morris to the sideline and into the end, or into the seats it goes. It'll bring up fourth down and 14. The key here will be not to allow the deep ball, but again, remember, they got to get out to the 15th, come up with a big stop here. They don't need a spectacular play. They don't need to get anything fancy. Just prevent the first down. Don't even really need the interception. It's a Foreman Mills. Fourth down. Foreman Mills stretch those bills. And the crowd getting behind it, and so are the sole defenders. They sense a big turning point in the game. They've been terrific the last few weeks and forcing turnovers on downs. Here we go. Fourth down. Morris in some trouble, charts the run, and they're going to stop him short of a first down. The ball comes loose, but the ball would be turned over on downs regardless. Yep, doesn't matter who recovers here, it'll still be sole football. The sole defense does its job, and Ron Jaworski back with us, leaning over the boards to say, way to go, boys. And they recovered by Brian Robinson, but I think it's all a moot point. Robinson gets in there for the recovery, but it would have been soul ball regardless of who came out of the pile with that first down for the soul. Well, you could almost feel that momentum shifting there. The beautiful long right sideline touchdown to Sean Kailina Moku. And then the soul defense after that sack by Brian Robinson stops him on three consecutive plays. They start first and 10 at the 13. Now remember, Boyce now is into the game. He's more of that red zone receiver. Hasn't seen too much action because the soul have been scoring from further out than getting in the red zone. He's the big target now, number 11, 6'4", 220 pounds, had a good game last week. And they go for Marker Thomas, a sliding grab in the corner of the end zone. It's a sole score. Brought to you by Foods Galore. A nice easy pass, pitch and catch as they call it, Lou, being able to get that cross pattern for Thomas to sneak his way across the end zone and just open space. He basically just had to cradle that one to get the touchdown. Marco Thomas with 12 touchdowns now and only about four and a half games of action on the season and a long way to go. Rotta ball with five touchdowns already in the first half. Freevert's kick is up and good. And you'll notice that that would have set up nicely with, with uh, McDaniel in motion, drew the defenders up and left a clear path for Thomas to get open in the end zone. Tom Goodhines, general manager of the Philadelphia Soul, and in the uh, in the booth with us. Tom, how long have you been in the AFL? This is 
This is my 14th year in the league, but I actually worked in the media before, so technically it's 20 years of being around the game. How well, many guys that know the game better than you do? Where do you rate this soul team right now? Let's compare it to the last couple of years, the teams that you've managed here. Well, I know that off the field, even from a team chemistry standpoint, this is probably the best team that I've been around from a chemistry. Chemistry. The guys genuinely like each other in, in, on and off the field, play very well from a talent standpoint. I put this team up against any team that I've been associated with. You look at some of the guys that left here, uh, Derek Ross, uh, Tiger Jones, uh, uh, Stan not Stanley Morgan, Donovan Morgan, who's having another great year out there. Uh, but this team off to a, looks could be 7-0 and after today. You just got to remember, too, a lot of it is teamwork and chemistry. It doesn't matter what level of football. It doesn't even matter what sport. When you take the NBA and the NHL, if the guys are playing together, and cohesively and know what their job is and do your job. That's coaching staff preaches that week in and week out. Do your job. Do, and this team is doing their job. Including the kicking game. Freevert will kick it long. And Tompkins can't return this one either. That's exactly what you want, right, Tom? Exactly. You want to pin that team inside or have them start at the five. And that's the goal. If he gets the extra bonus of hitting the iron because it's a little bit higher, then that's a, that's a bonus for the, the, the special teams. So now the Soul, and don't forget, folks, they trailed in this game 6 to nothing. Uh, have a two-score lead on Orlando with three minutes to go in the first half. That's the one thing that you'll, you'll see with this team is now the last couple of games of not really, you know, stepping on the throat here. they got to yeah. keep on continuing the score and not let up on the gas pedal. Morris being put to the test now. He stumbles but flips it to his offensive guard slash tight end for a short game. What you like seeing there, watching Brian Robinson at the feet of Morris here. That's what you like to see. When Brian gets into that groove, and it appears in this first half that he's, he's in that mode right now, that's what you like to see, him continuing to bring that pressure. That was Michael Simons, the fullback on the middle screen. Picked up seven yards, maybe eight. It's second down. They need to get across the 15. Morris has time. Throws it with some heat. Complete to Kendall Tompkins. No relation to Brandon. Kendall Tompkins out of the University of Miami. Having a good season. Came in with 40 catches, 564 yards, and nine touchdowns. And it's a first down right at midfield. With 1.50 to go, we'll play regulation timing at the one-minute mark. And the Soul have been doing a very good job up front of containing Morris, keeping him in that pocket, making him throw. The defensive backs have had their opportunities as well. First and 10, Morris steps up, now starts to run. And has some running room and dodges a tackle and into the end zone goes Bernard Morris from 25 yards and a bit of a shocker. You don't see that very often in arena ball. So I had the reverse jinx. <laughs> yeah. You're just talking about how well they were containing him right there. They were able to get outside. He gets outside of containment. You can just see exactly what the coaching staff was talking all week about Morris. Keep him contained because this is exactly what he can do to you. And Gooseby just makes a bad move. He cut inside and went for that move. And Morris, once he had that edge, he had the end zone. Boy, yeah, uh, Gooseby, as good as there is in the game, uh, gets beat, and he's done a great job in shadowing Morris the last few years when Morris has quarterbacked the Jacksonville Sharks. Well, part of that problem was he was on his heels there, and then once he bit on the inside move... Hadn't broken down. Yeah, he had no he had no chance of, of catching him back outside. Christian Reed, the emergency kicker for Jacksonville tonight, who's missed one with exactly one minute to go in the first half. Jacksonville scores to knock one off that two-score sole advantage. Reed has the conversion. One minute to go in the first half. We'll be back with more from the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia to score. Philadelphia 35, Jacksonville 27. Something you don't see very often just a moment ago. Morris 25 yards on a scramble in the narrow confines of arena football to get them back in the game. Well, in the pregame, we were talking about the differences between the two quarterbacks. Randy Hippard, who's their normal starting quarterback, is out with the injury, had the elbow injury. But Bernard Morris brings that different element. The coaching staff knew that going in this week, that that was a guy that they were going to have to contain in order to be successful. And right there, you just saw exactly why the coaches were preaching that all week. So they're back in the game, and Orlando goes for the onside kick here in the final minute of the first half. Not an unusual strategy as things really ramp up in the final minute. 
but Xavier Boyce, as he did last week, he's the hands man, and he makes the grab for the sole offense. It's, it's funny watching Coach Dalzell over on the other sideline saying, listen, that's great that he went up and grabbed it, but get down. Yeah, <laughs> tuck it. You, you pulled it in, made a nice play, but Curl get it. down and protect it. Curl it, always coaching. Clint out there on the field, as you're allowed to do in arena ball when his offense is on the field. Derek Stingley, though, this year for the first time comes out and runs the defense for Clint. First and 10, they can pick up a first down inside the one. They'll start at the 11. Dan Rodaball already with five touchdown passes in the first half. Looks, and this one is nearly picked off by Terrence Sanders, the very active Jack linebacker on the slant pass. No, he didn't even look that one off. And right there, Boyce didn't even look like he knew it was coming. He made no move at all, and the ball was coming right at him for, for Boyce there. But Clint obviously yelling at Dan that maybe had the wrong read on that, but he, looked, he didn't look anywhere else. So second down and 10, that does stop the clock in the final minute. 53 seconds as Dan looks and throws close to the sidelines. It's complete, just picks up a couple of yards. See that guy in the orange shirt right above Jeff Kings on the boards? That's Ron Jaworski, the sole co-owner. He's back on hand after missing a week for his son's wedding a week ago. And speaking of sole owners, we'll be talking with the colorful, also colorful, not, not so much with an orange shirt, Cosmo Denicola coming up at the half to tell us about uh, some of the soul programs coming up in the season and also some of the special things that he's involved with in this year ahead. Time out on the field, Tom, and an important series here tonight, and especially in Jacksonville to our Comcast broadcast from Philadelphia. Third down, Rodaball under some trouble. Backpedaling, firing to the end zone, and Boyce, his tallest receiver, went up in the air but couldn't bring it back down. Clint Ozell angry about something. Yeah, he's looking at the back judge for some reason there. Didn't get uh, the view there. Looks like he's going to kick it. So the soul in fourth down will try to stretch the field the same way that Foreman Mills can stretch your bills. It'll take about uh, six yards to pick up a first down, seven to hit the end zone, but they're going to go for the field goal. Wise move here. Freevert, one of three on the season, converted from 32 last week, this from 23, and it's perfect. Perfect. Freevert has been excellent tonight in every facet of the kicking game. The field goal give the Soul the lead with 37 seconds left. Soul 38. Well, Orlando 27. Getting to the bottom of it there. Looks like Clint was calling for a hold as Boyce was making that crossing pattern. He was grabbing his hips. It looked like he was saying Boyce was being spun around and didn't have a chance at that because there was some contact in that secondary. He's saying he's pulling him in. You got to make that call. And again, our camera's picking up some of the fun that goes on not only during the action, but in between the plays here at the Wells Fargo Center. And fans of all ages, we start them young. <laughs> And they know when they're on TV here. You know, it's a whole generation that's accustomed to seeing their image on, on television, they're looking up at the Jumbotron and the Arena Vision crew that does such a fine job here at the Wells Fargo Center. Well, it shouldn't be a surprise here, Lou, to see a, probably an onside kick coming here from the Soul. Try to get that possession back, remember. You want to score before, be the last one in. Hey, you keep asking that question on strategy. What's the difference between indoor and outdoor? These are some of those differences because it's about possessions, not necessarily scores. So the Soul want to end the half with the score. Watch for the pop-up kick to the kicker's right. This is Freevert. Kicks it away deep. Pops it up short, though, and Tompkins will have a return opportunity. Picks up a block from Sanders, and then it's Gooseby, the linebacker, with a very solid tackle. Well, the flip side of that strategy, not going with that, is obviously you have faith in this defense to hold Orlando out of the end zone, which they have shown you that they have that ability to flip the script and get them to uh, possibly a turnover or stop them here on downs. Remember, the Soul have their full allotment of, of timeouts as well. Each team's defense has stopped the other's offense once on downs. The difference has been that the Soul have stopped I uh, make it twice on downs, but the Soul have stopped Jacksonville with an interception by James Romain, the big defensive play of the game so far. 
32 seconds for Morris and his offense to work from. Throwing off his back foot, just got it over the hands of Goosby, the linebacker, for a completion and a first down. And a clock rolls down to 25 before a timeout is taken by Orlando. With 25 seconds left, we'll keep it right here. Seoul leading by 11. Florida road swing coming up for Philadelphia after tonight against, ironically, Orlando. They go on the road to take on Jacksonville next weekend. And then on the road at Tampa Bay, always a tough place to play. And our little uh, Florida flavor, little Orlando and Jacksonville, Tampa. Very competitive. One of the historically great divisions in arena football dating back to the early days. The war on I-4. In 91 when Orlando came into the league, you know, they were a benchmark and still are one of those franchises that you point to as being an elite group. John Gruden, former quarterback and coach down there. Morris' is pass a little bit behind his intended receiver, and it's incomplete. And remember, there is a, an obvious respect level here that Philadelphia, obviously one of those teams that sees themselves on that elite level, but Orlando, the rich history, even dating back to the Ben Bennett's, and even Pat O'Hara as their, as their quarterback and winning championships with Jay Gruden. This is one of those teams. Did that, I say John? Know, I'm sorry. I think I said John. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, Jay, Jay was the Washington coach now, but the, he won not only as a coach, but, but a he also player, won as a yeah. quarterback as well. But that was with Tampa. Brackens the motion man. Morris under a big barrage is slammed to the ground. Did he get the pass off? Is it a fumble? What is the call? They're going to call incomplete. I did think his arm went forward. They're going to possibly challenge, but I would hold on to it because his arm was coming forward. I think Clint's going to challenge it anyway. Oh, he this, was slammed by his own man after he was bull rushed by Justin Lawrence. He does get it off. Remember, well, watch the arm. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> They're saying it came loose before. Calling it a fumble. That's what, what? That's Watch what this. the soul is hoping for. I mean, why, and why not take the risk at it? Look at that. Lawrence just shoved the 305-pound fullback back into the quarterback. Now, what they're hoping to see from the soul standpoint, that he wasn't in the act of passing, that the ball came out before the arm came forward. I'm not sure they're going to win this one. So the officials will go over and look at the 50-foot screen. But it's worth screen. the shot. If the official sees it a different way, it's worth taking that risk. With, what, 15 seconds left to go in the first half. Ball is spotted right now at the Orlando 19-yard line. Yeah, that lower angle from behind will give you a good look at it as he was shoved, as you said, Justin Lawrence just driving the oh. center back into, the, into Morris. Morris falling away, just trying to get rid of it, but was hit from behind. The question for the officials to decide on is, was the ball coming out before the arm was going forward? Right. And definitely a risk that Coach Dalzell wanted to, to take here. Because if it is ruled, here's the other thing. If it is ruled that it was a fumble, it's not going to be a touchdown for the soul because they blew it dead. They will give, would give possession, clear possession, to the soul at the point of recovery. So that that is also coming into play. So if, if they do rule that it was a fumble, even though Patrick, Patrick Scott picked it up and got into the end zone, the officials signaled that it was incomplete. They will give them the ball at the point of recovery. Well, they've seen enough. After review, the passer's arm was coming forward. Yep. Therefore, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Philadelphia is charged with its first time out of the half. 30-second timeout. All right, that's referee Scott Aronovitz with the call. No, I, I knew going in it, it, it was a, a chance that he was had to take with that ball. And the, if the official had seen something different, then it was, you know, it would have been a, a good call by the soul to challenge. 15 seconds left in the first half. We're at the Wells Fargo Center. Arena football action. Soul on top of Orlando. 38 to 27. Lou Tilly and Tom Goodhines bringing you the action from Philly. Morris pump fakes, throws it over the middle, then one hops it for Larry Brackens. He was a little bit gun shy now, Tom. He's yep. throwing off that back foot. Just, just going to say that, Lou, because you notice that now that defensive pressure is showing that effect. Your happy feet doesn't allow Morris to settle, set, and step and throw. And that one, he short hopped it. 
That, I think, is a direct relation to the previous Last play ball. and that contact from Lawrence and the pressure, Brian Robinson, and also Patrick Scott. And don't forget Curtis Young from that max spot, really bringing that pressure. Hey. You get Morris with happy feet, you're not gonna see a lot of completions. Fourth down. And call it 10 for Orlando. And now the officials jump in. And it's delay of game on Orlando. So make it fourth and 15. Showing a little bit of disorganization here on Orlando. They're gonna have to gather themselves here. If they can force it in completion here and in short order and call timeout, they will have one shot at the end zone, Will Soul, or maybe a field goal try. And so the public address announcer, Vinny the Crumb, tries to juice up the crowd on hand to help out the Soul defense. They've already stopped them three times on the evening, and that accounts for the 11 point lead. Here comes Tompkins in motion. Morris now rolling to his right, buying some time, flings it, and broken up by Romaine. Did he intercept nope, it? No, nope. that would be a bad move. Smart he knocks play. it down. He's holding his helmet, but that was the wise thing. Let yeah. it go to the turf. Don't pad the stats. Get the ball. No, don't grab it at the goal line. Now the soul's going to take over. That was the smart play. Let it go incomplete. As you'll see Romaine trying to spin himself back around to come up with it, but... You know, for his benefit, he couldn't get around in time for the Souls' benefit because now the ball's all the way still down at the 14 with four seconds. So they got a shot here to get in the end zone. And they're going to try at least one pass as Rodderball comes into the huddle and barks out the signals. The call from Clint Dozell, the ball at the 14. Four ticks left on the first half clock. Soul lead it by 11, trying to go into the locker room with more. Thomas is the motion man. Quick flip to McDaniel. He'll take it out of bounds at the nine and spot it right there, and here comes Freebert, and they'll go for the field goal. And this is sneaking in three here, Lou. You figured, hey, what? take a shot at the end zone. No, let's let's get the points. Freebert, who is, who's been very accurate this year. 17 and eight, this will be a 25 yarder. He's made consecutive field goals now of 25 and 32 yards after missing his first two this season. McDaniel is the holder. This will be the last play of the first half. Spot, kick, and perfect. And the kicking game does make a difference. So the soul head to the half, and we'll come back with our halftime show. Our score from Philadelphia, the 6-0 soul, 41, Orlando, 27. It's soul football on the Comcast Network. And brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Getting ready for the second half here in Philadelphia, in South Philadelphia, on a beautiful spring evening. Philadelphia came in at 6-0, and Orlando at 3-3, three and three, but coming off two, two a really uh, rough 56-55 overtime losses in a row. Philly has really not been challenged since their opening game of the year, a 70-63 win in Orlando, and trying to stretch out their year to 7-0. and As you heard Cosmo Denicola tell you, 10-0, the all-time high watermark for a Philadelphia Arena League team. And in that year, they went on to win it all. Lutilli settling in with Tom Goodhines for our second half. Philly up by 14 and kicking it away to Orlando. Freebert, who's been a big story, kicking the ball. And for the third time tonight, kicks it through the uprights and out of play. Now, one thing you'll notice, Lou, that at the end of that half, it was the momentum captured by the defense of the pressure they were able to put on Morris. Can they keep up that energy here coming out in the third quarter? Third quarter is always a very tough spot for any team coming out. And if you'll notice across the board, Lou, that all teams have a little bit of trouble in that third quarter because you take that break, all that momentum you had going for you, it's hard to get that thing started again. If you haven't been down to the Wells Fargo Center, we invite you to join us, 888-789-SOUL, for tickets by phone and PhiladelphiaSoul.com online. Morris, who was shaky in the second quarter after a strong first quarter, while throwing for only 13 second quarter yards, starts off with a short confidence builder that only nets about three. And a quick out, trying to get confidence again for Morris, get him back in that rhythm so that he's comfortable in the pocket, can operate the offense for offensive coordinator Saya Burley. Second who, down, let's call it seven. Saya Burley, who is himself a former MVP Offensive Player of the Year back in 07. 
And again to the sideline and way too hot for Tompkins to handle and Kent Richardson was in his grill, probably played a factor. And I think Bostic on the sideline caught one off the, off the noggin. Oh, on the bench? Yeah, that came blazing in there. It looked like Bostic took one right off the, right off the, right off the melon. Philly bench about the 15 yard line to the top of your screen just behind the Hyundai sign. And he's shaking it off. Well, already a third down and long for Morris here to start the third quarter. Just shows you you got to keep your head on the swivel. Morris is, yeah, Morris is throwing off the back foot and fading away in his throws all of a sudden. Let's see what he does here. Third down, has some time, and throws that one in rhythm. And it's a completion in front of Romaine for a first down out to the 20. I like the game I've seen so far from the guys up front and watching Justin Lawrence, as you had mentioned before, and that oh. sack incompletion just shoving the center back into the lap of Morris, and that'll throw anybody off at any time. But Ryan Cave, the center for... Yeah, that was a highlight play, and he didn't even touch the quarterback. First and 10, Tompkins in motion. The give to the fullback, Michael Simons, goes nowhere. And as you would expect, the big man in the middle is playing a very strong game. Justin Lawrence on the tackle, 6'2", 295 pounds from down the road in Balmer at Morgan State. Both him and Patrick Scott there grabbing the shoulder pads, not getting fooled on the run at all, bringing him down. And again, then remember, that's a change of pace. In arena football, when it's like 80 to 90% passing, yeah. and some teams it's even high as 95% passing attack, you've got to keep the defensive front honest. Brandon Tompkins will be the motion man coming into your screen about now. And there's the snap. Morris throws it the other way to the other Tompkins, and he's got some running room. Cutting back at the 15 and down near the 10 before Goosby corrals Kendall Tompkins. Able to pick up that first down, sliding down in that zone, finding his space, churning the corner. A nice block on the corner to spin him to the wall. And then Gooseby finally catches up with him and brings him down. Yeah, Gooseby actually had two shots at him, but the linebacker, the veteran linebacker out of terrain did not give up on the play. First and 10, they can pick up a first down at the Philadelphia 1 without scoring. Now here's an area where you've got to watch Larry Brackens. They went to him a couple times in the first half in this situation. He's bottom of the screen, number one, set in the slot now in motion. They didn't go with a high motion man. Instead, throw to Tompkins. Sort of a modified screen that goes nowhere. Well played by Freeman. Brandon Freeman, a bigger defensive back, actually the tallest in the secondary for the soul at six foot one. Reads that one perfectly, and you want to talk about sure tackler. Whap! Hits him high, brings him down. Loss of three on the play. Interesting formation that they had Bracken set in the slot and they actually used him as the motion man and then threw to the deep receiver. Didn't work though. Second and 13, let's call it, at the sole 14. Just under 11 minutes to go in the third quarter, sole up by 14. Morris throws to the inside. I don't know if it was tipped by Lawrence. It might have been, but it's incomplete. And a little bit behind the receiver as well. Trying that quick three step, still not setting up. It still appears that Morris is a little uncomfortable in that pocket. Tried to get it out quickly, but he didn't have his feet set. If you're just joining us, Morris, who's played a lot of arena football, but mostly in Jacksonville, has been the backup all year here in Orlando and watched Randy Hibbert on a record start to the season at over 75% completion. But Hibbert hurt last week in the loss to Cleveland and Morris getting the start in Philly. Orlando comes in at 3-3. Three and three. Brackens is the motion man this time. Morris looks there all the way, and Big Larry has it down to the 4, but short of the first down, it'll bring up a fourth down try. Again, another spot in the field to watch for Larry. He's the big man right there. Morris not hiding where he's going no. with the football. He went right locked in on Larry. I mean, it was the same thing when Larry was here with us, this red zone, and we were looking for him. Stretch your bills at Foreman Mills, and Orlando will try to stretch the field. And they don't have to get into the end zone here. Remember, they only have to get down to about the one to pick up that first down. All the receivers are set to Morris's right. Tompkins to the corner. Morris might scramble. Now throws it over the middle, incomplete, and no flags. No flags. A defensive stop. They're calling it a touchback. It's an interception. An interception. Larico Stevenson grabbed the ball before it hit the turf. 
Watch his quick hands. It's tipped up in the air. Oh, yeah. He got underneath it. It's an interception for Larico, and he was down in the end zone. They're going to call a touchback and put it out at the five. Even if it had been incomplete, the soul would have forced another stop on downs. That is their fourth stop by the defense on the evening. And that's been a key all year, Tom, for the Soul's undefeated start. 41-27 with a chance to go up three scores on their first offensive possession of the second half of play. And some of the young folks watching the Soul trying to go to 7-0. Rada ball just flips it out. Marco Thomas makes an adjustment, but it was a soft toss and can pull it in. Yeah, an easy pitch and catch again. They're playing way off of Thomas there and just gave him tons of room. It's like nobody was within five yards for him to make that catch. Marco Thomas, who was thrown out of the game in that third quarter melee last year, which the video later revealed he had absolutely nothing to do with. And Clint Dozell was very uh, animated in his comments about that in the newspaper this week. McDaniel, top of the screen, will take this flip, and it's a little short. Dan, just a little quick in that release. Had a little more time than he might have realized. It's incomplete. We'll bring up third down. See Dan up in the upper right corner of your screen in front of the Ron Jaworski sideboard, talking with his coach, Clint Dozell. Now trots back in with a call. Third down, call it four. The Soul need to get to the 15 to get a new set of downs with eight minutes to go and up 41-27 in Philly in the third quarter. McDaniel is on the move again and they'll blow it dead. Movement by the offense. Man, Tivis. He's got his hands on his head. Smith. Start. Offense number three. Five-yard penalty. Huh. Well, not even. Third There's down. Wasn't the motion man either. A little bit of a twitch from Marco Thomas. Draws the flag. But he mentioned Adam Smith. They have not used the tight end screen to the big man yet tonight. But he's been a real factor in the passing game. As number 76 with six catches on the year and two of them for touchdowns. Including also one a, last week. He's got a two-point conversion as well. And a two-point conversion. And he told me all about it in the post-game party at Chicken <laughs> Pete's last week. Third down and long, rifles it out to Thomas, trying to run for the yardage Got after it. the catch and gets the first down. Good yeah. job for last year's receiver of the year, Marco Thomas. I want to talk about Watt too. Watt, look where he gets to the ball. He's got to get out to the 15, knows he's got to beat two defenders, and then stretches out, gets across the 15, picks up the first down. Marco surprisingly strong at six foot, 190 pounds, came into the, this game with 52 catches, 562, that's 109 per game and already has two touchdown catches and over 100 yards tonight. New set of downs for Rodderbaugh. Gives it to Taggart, who has some hops and nearly breaks it and is across midfield for a sole first down. Yep, and just that little hesitation because he couldn't get that plant foot out from underneath Smith as he tried to step over Adam to get over there. If he made that last step, he would have been off to the races. Hey, See when is uh, Taggart going to get his buddy, uh, that Bradford guy, over to the game. This is uh, an Oklahoma Sooner who played defensive line for Sam Bradford back in the day. And also Murray. We don't forget about him as well. Not only to Marco guys, Murray, yeah. All those guys were, were down there. You could so have a Sooner night here at he, the Soul. He absolutely could. The Sooner Souls. As my partner likes to call the team, the Philadelphia Souls. Talking about Marty Judge, not with us tonight, recovering from hip surgery. We wish Marty well. Hopefully watching on cable down in Florida tonight. Uh, speaking of Florida, after this game with Orlando tonight, we head down to the Sunshine State for the Florida feud a couple of weeks against the Sharks next weekend in Jacksonville and then the following week in Tampa. And the Soul will be staying in the Sunshine State in between to tune up and spend some quality time together before they head back to Philly and Atlantic City for the Boardwalk Bowl on May 30th. Second down and six for Rotter Ball's offense. Lobs it to the corner. McDaniel, flag flies, and the ball falls. You see a little contact early as McDaniel went up for the ball, and he had the defender on his shoulders. That's going to draw the call. Defense, number 23. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Eric Mark at McIntosh. Second time he's been called for pass interference against McDaniel. Now watch. Right there. And remember, that ball would have been still live as it bounced around. 
Had it been pulled in still off the wall, it is live, still live, and then it hits the ground wow. incomplete. Buried by three Predators, but it's a first and goal for the Soul at the nine of Orlando, trying to stretch it out to a three-score lead in the third quarter. McDaniel will take a 15-yard running start at the line of scrimmage. There's some motion in the blow of debt. Going with that hard count. Full start, offense, number 74, five-yard penalty, first down. That's the center, too. That's a, the hard call of getting the center to be yeah. starting early, but sometimes that hard count does that. You, know, you run that risk of fooling your own team. Shannon Breen, not to be confused with Adam Smith. Two big boys in that front line, sporting that uh, Ryan McDaniel-style beard yeah, right now. say two big bearded boys. Yeah. Remember, Breen is an all-arena performer from a year ago. First and goal from the 14. McDaniel circles back to the right, and then Rodeball throws to the end zone, trying to get Thomas yeah. behind the defender, and they flow another flag in the end zone. Yeah, a lot of contact, not letting him turn the corner. Taylor not letting him have that space. That's going to draw a flag every time. Flag Legal contact. Play. Defense number 32. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Nick Taylor. What's it about these third quarters these last two weeks, Tom, with the penalty flags? That's Heavy it. penalties. And again, Dan just releasing that one in time. But watch, see the arm going up, not allowing Marco to get around the corner there. He can't do that. Illegal contact draws that flag. So we have our third first and goal. And now we're back to the nine-yard line where this all started. And the clock ticks down, under four and a half to go. Brought a ball, there's the screen to the big guy, Smith. Five yard line, touchdown for the pride of Western Kentucky, Adam Smith. We call it just a few snaps too soon. Hoots galore score by the soul. It's great extension of that running game and it set up nicely all the attention. Look, everybody going over, rotating to McDaniel again, leaving Smith to shake one, two defenders and into the end zone. Well, he just broke the ankle of Matangi Tonga, the middle linebacker. Big man, you're gonna hit him high. He's gonna carry you into the end zone. He's gonna be at about five pound of wings tonight, I'm gonna tell you something. Freeverts kick is up and good, and the Soul has established a three score lead with 3.41 to go in the third. The Soul trying to go to seven and oh. They lead it 48 to 27. Soul football on the Comcast Network, as always, is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Welcome back from the Wells Fargo Center. This game uh, played on a beautiful Friday night in Philadelphia, and it's a beautiful Friday night for the hometown Philadelphia Soul fans, whose team is ahead once again, as they have been virtually all season, 48-27 over Orlando, the team that's given them the closest call of an undefeated season so far. Freebert kicking from the right side this time has had a wonderful night kicking the football, and this time off the nets. Tompkins will be corralled and then breaks free. I spoke too soon, 10, 15, 20. Tompkins will go all the way for a touchdown. And no flags on the play. It looked like they had him two yards deep in the end zone. You gotta make that initial hit, and that's on Boyce. Watch him miss here. Just throws everything off because now the lanes reopen and he finds his groove and, and Tom, Tommy's not going to get there to pull him down. And it looked like Freeman was spun around. I don't know if he was held. I know he definitely acted like he was held and spun around. That's how fast things can change in the Arena League games. Conversion attempt. And after a shaky start, Christian Reed has been perfect. So 2.42, 2.41 to go in the third quarter from Philadelphia. The Soul lead Orlando 48-34. to Lou Tilly, Tom Goodhines, veterans of AFL football know you can never let your guard down. You're up three scores, and bam, that quickly it can change. It just, you talk about doing your job, and there it looked like Boyce had him corralled in the end zone. 
One missed tackle if everybody else isn't following where they need to be. Those lanes will open up and the result is a is a kick return for a touchdown. And it's a kick deep off the nets as well. You did everything the way you're supposed to do it except wrap up on the you tackle. Got to make the tackle. Uh, it's hard to get on boys because he did come down there, but you can't spin off the guy. You got to make that tackle, get the touchback, and have them start out at the five. So might Orlando now use the kicking game and try the onside kick to get back in a hurry? No, they'll kick it deep, relatively so. Larico Stevenson from his own goal line. Good coverage, and Larry Brackens, who's always a standout on special teams for the soul, makes the hit for Orlando. Philadelphia will start from their own six-yard line, 2.31 to go in the third quarter from Philly. It's the soul 48, Orlando 34. I saw you already uh, making plans for that. I saw your little notes there, how you were spending it. Yeah, I'm, I'm divvying it up. Soul checking out the number. See that they hold 14 on Orlando as Dan Rodeball's crew starts off and Marco Thomas wide open, tucks the ball away, and a nice gain of 12 yard line, uh, 12 yards to start this drive. Now the thing you're looking for, you were talking about a little sloppiness, and the offense has got to keep on this pace. It, go back to the, the game plan, the, the flow of the game, getting the offense rolling, running the right routes. Moving the ball effectively, ending with a score. That's what they need to stay in. Soul up 14 with 1.45 to go in the third. That clock will roll with the exception of scores until the final minute. Taggart, who's had a good night running, gets a couple around the left side, forced out of bounds after a two or three yard gain. Slim looking compared to some fullbacks in the league I mentioned, but 6'3", 275, former defensive lineman for the Oklahoma Sooners, where he played with Sam Bradford. And Demarcus Murray. In Norman, Oklahoma. Second down and long. SK, the target. Ah, I can't quite hold on. The ball was hot and he had just came out of it, come out of his break. He couldn't quite get his hands together in time. Yeah, he's been catching everything else tonight. That's the one time he didn't catch it. And you're not surprised he didn't because of the late read and, and picking that one up coming in. Almost identical to the other side, that great one-handed stab he made for a touchdown. He had just come out of his break, and it's so hard. People don't realize with a limited field of vision when your head's inside a football helmet, when you turn around to locate the football first. Not so easy, my friends. Third down and long for the soul, just short of midfield. And McDaniel's the motion man, top of your screen. Rodaball looking down the middle for McDaniel, and it's a little short. And incomplete, opening up fourth down for the soul. 10 for 15 on the season in converting the Foreman Mills fourth down try. And Anthony Shutt who's just turning the head around at the last second. Gets that hand out of there. McDaniel a little bit behind him. Had Dan put that out in front, it would have been McDaniel for a touchdown. So a huge play for Orlando trying to turn the flow of this game coming up when we start the fourth quarter from Philadelphia. You're watching the Philadelphia Soul on Comcast with the Soul leading 48-34. Start the fourth quarter here in Philadelphia in the sole lead, Orlando 48 to 34. Three quarters of stats. Morris, the Orlando quarterback, had 98 yards after the first quarter, Tom. Only has 46 total yards in the next two quarters. Well, even remember, it's it's some of that momentum is gathered by that kick return and got things going over because clearly the defense has been putting on the pressure and, and actually playing things well keeping him contained. But here, to start the fourth quarter, the Soul facing a fourth down and the possibility of a turnover on downs if they can't convert, and Orlando would have a chance to get right back in it. Ronaball then lobs it up and long, not even close, as he throws off his back foot to a very distressed Clint Dolzell. The turnover occurs. Orlando has forced it. They'll take over near midfield with a chance to draw within one score after trailing by three scores midway through the third. I'm not sure that one looked like it was just on Dan purely on there because McDaniel ran, got the sticks, and that one was up over the top of all of it and drops incomplete on fourth down. You get, got to stick it in there. I mean, bottom line, Lou, I mean, there's no question about it. You fourth down, you, sometimes you got to make those chances and not lob it in there. You got to stick it in there. 
And so we have a ball game. It's all on Morris now to get his Predators back in this thing and goes for it on four first down and overthrows his receiver in the end zone, Lamar Brown. Now how will the defense answer? That's going to be the question. They got been getting stops and, and really controlling things. They got an interception in the end zone for the drive with Morris before. Now can they continue to put that pressure and keep the offense off balance. Coach Rob Keefe of Orlando tries to get it all in one throw after the turnover, as you often see in football. So second down and 10, first down will take them down near the 10-yard line. It's Brown in motion, and it's Morris on the keeper, and he breaks the right side, and the quarterback has his second rushing touchdown of the night. Morris now has 58 yards rushing. The unknown factor and a great play call, if truth be told. Yeah, again, being able to see and scout and recognize the weakness in the secondary for the soul and not being able to get over to that side of the field and got Goosby one-on-one -on -one with the fullback and all the fullback had to do is drive Goosby out of the way and clear sailing for Morris. Morris has touchdown runs of 32 and 23 yards now on the night and he did it with his feet when his arm was starting to get a little weary and worn. An important PAT is up and good, and folks, we have a barn burner all of a sudden. We'll take a break. The Soul lead it, but by just seven, 48-41. Down to seven and zero on the season. At one point, had a three-score, 21-point lead over the Orlando Predators here in the third quarter, or rather in the third quarter. But now after a turnover on downs, Bernard Morris scampering from 23 yards out for a touchdown. That lead is down to seven at 48-41. Short kick for Stevenson. Three yards deep. Has the 15. And the soul will start from near midfield. One of those things that can jumpstart that offense, Lou. I mean, after that bad series on four, going out on downs, to be able to use that to hopefully give him a little kickstart and get Dan back in the right rhythm. Something of a sluggish third quarter. Timeout on the field. The fourth quarter promises to finish with some fire. The sole lead it, 48-41. The special packages to make it a special sure memorial weekend you won't forget. Back at the Wells Fargo Center on a Friday night. Rotta ball back to work. Looks sideline, has his receiver for a first down. SK back in the action. Kylie Nomoko, Sean Kylie Nomoko. We call him SK for short. I think he moves the chains. The official on the far side is signaling second down. Yeah, a little short. They needed to get to the 15. Clint Dozell, Soul with the ball and the lead, and Clint prides himself on working the clock in the fourth quarter so critical particularly with the lead you want to score would you want to work the clock to your favor it rolls non-stop until the final minute of each half brought a ball to the end zone has a man ryan mcdaniel back in the scorebook with a sole score for foods galore you knew you couldn't keep him quiet for long you got that corner route Ryan making the great catch, keeping concentration and getting down into that corner and getting the much needed touchdown to get it back to a two score lead. Watch Dan with the patience, finds Ryan in that corner on the corner route, pulls it in easily. Coming right at you in the living room there. Seventh touchdown toss of the night for Dan Rodabaugh, whose season high is eight against, guess who? The Orlando Predators. And still 11.24 to go in this one. Freevert has been perfect, has a couple of field goals, and now the Soul have a two-score lead again with 11-17 to go. Philly 55, Orlando 41. Uh, Dan Rodaball, 19-29, 282, seven touchdown passes now, Tom, and back in rhythm in just one series. Well, the key stat there is not on the page. It's zero interceptions. I mean, it's the seven touchdowns, but it's... You know, you can nitpick here, overthrow there, overthrow there, but it's still, it's an incompletion, not an interception. By the way, this is a little uh, lockdown booth cam thing that we've come up with for our broadcast. And you can see most of our control room is right here in our booth with us. There's seven technicians right behind us. I don't know how they like that. 
Back to the action. So will kick it away now and holding a two touchdown lead again at 55 to 41. Freevert has been outstanding kicking the ball, Tom, tonight. Extra points, two field goals, and his kickoffs have been excellent as well, even though one was returned for a touchdown. The last one, in fact. Here's Tompkins. Uh oh, this one's loose. It's anybody's ball, and then down in the end zone. That's exactly what the safety guy is supposed to do just smother it as a nice play there by Taylor, just getting on it and laying on it, because otherwise the soul were there to, to pounce on it. Some other stats of note as we come down the stretch here. Marco Thomas now has eight grabs for 130. Kylene Amoku, six for 111 and three touchdowns. And Ryan McDaniel now has four for 32 and one touchdown. The quarterback for Orlando, Bernard Morris, just so-so, I'd have to say, throwing the ball after a strong first quarter. 15 of 28, 144, two interceptions, but his run for 58 total yards and two touchdowns on design plays. This one a little high, but Tompkins' his receiver bails him out and gets it out to the eight-yard line. And then a late flag comes in, maybe on Brian Robinson for a late hit. Either a late hit or the way he was scurrying back there. I don't know if the, when he was coming down, if a piece of the face mask, possibly. Turtle foul, late hit, defense number 12. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. And just so you know, Lou, a point of emphasis this year, or this week, from the league office sent out saying, listen, we're going to be cracking down hard on the late hits, the personal fouls, all the stuff that aren't needed to clean it up. So be aware of it. And that time you saw they were true to their word. This this in the wake of the little scrum last week? I think there was a lot of things because there was also an incident out in Arizona. Yeah. They just want to keep things buckled down. An important drive here for Morris and Orlando. And on first down, he completes it to number 13. That's Lamarck. Brown is big 6'4", 230-pound receiver. Close to a first down. They're going to move the chains. Ten minutes, a lot of time left in anybody's league, but especially in arena ball. Uh, you got to give credit to, to Morris here in this game. And coming in at the top, we had mentioned, hey, keep him contained. It, I mean, those rushing yards, 55 rushing yards. Two, the two touchdowns yeah. have really kept them in the game. From outside of 25, Morris lobs it up, has a wide open receiver near the goal line, stretching. Uh, they'll call it out of bounds. Remember, it's contact with the wall from the defender. You know, some of the defensive backs need to get better at that skill. Not saying the soul aren't, but you notice around the league, a lot of the guys trying to bring a guy down on their own. If you're smart, you'd use one hand to push him against the wall. He's out of bounds. Well, Mark Brown on a consecutive receptions now from Morris, who suddenly has found his passing rhythm again, and he is a real threat down near the goal line with his feet. First and goal from two-yard line, the two-yard out, two yards out. And Morris on the keeper. Nothing doing. Loose ball. Fumble as he lost it when they were hitting the pile. So it'll be a loss of one on the play. Fullback Simons was able to pick it up. Watch the contact here and then the poke the ball out right there. Larico getting the helmet in there and the ball's popping loose. Unfortunately, Patrick Scott was on his back. Had he looked up on and just pit, grabbed the ball off his helmet, it would have been a turnover. Wasted play for Orlando, second and goal from the three. Big receivers on the field, Brackens and Brown, both 6'4 plus along with one of the Tompkins right now. That's Brown in motion. The lob to him, incomplete. Well, Rico Stevenson there on the coverage just to make sure get it over the wall. Don't have to play superhero to try to come up with an interception, knock it out of bounds. Watch, he missed times his jump just a hair, but still enough to cause a distraction and have that ball tip out of bounds. Third and goal. Soul have held down in the red zone already tonight. Morris comes over for a word with his coach and now trots back to the huddle. There is a play clock in arena ball and it's down to 10. They've already been called for delay of game once. Remember, this is Morris's first time in the starting role for Orlando this year. And with one second, they'll get it off. Morris rolling left and it's a pitch on a reverse to Tompkins. And he'll follow a block and get into the end zone. A well-designed run play all the way with Morris and the soul knowing that he is quick afoot following the fake one way and back Hopkins goes the other way for the yeah, score. They, they swarm as they saw Morris and watch. He knew it had to be something up here as he delayed and then pitched at the last second. Hopkins had one guy in front of him and all he had to do is get by Goosby and he was in the end zone. 
So a must-have touchdown for Orlando, and they do convert. And Morris impressive on that drive with his ball handling and his throwing. Important extra point. The hold was shaky, but placed, and it's good. So with 7.04 to go, the sole 55, Orlando 48. Orlando won't go away. They've drawn within seven again, and we'll kick it away. Where we go, Stevens deep, and we'll get another chance on a short kick at the goal line. And crushed at the eight-yard line, where Dan Rodaball's offense will start the highest scoring offense in the AFL, trying to go to 7-0 and o on the season. This game started with Rodaball and the sole on offense. They were stopped on down, surprisingly. Bernard Morris and Orlando grabbed a 6-0 lead. Between then and mid-third quarter, the Skull, out, Skull outscored Orlando by 27 to take a 21-point lead. But then another turnaround at the start of the fourth quarter as Orlando is able to draw within seven, and we've got a ball game. Remember, Orlando is, is in the lead of their division. I mean, they got a lot to play for tonight, and there's no question the quality of talent that's on this ball club. McDaniel in motion, top of your screen, and again... Barely had time to turn his head and it went zipping and gave him a buzz cut across the top of his helmet. It looked like Ryan had the ability if he had pulled that one in to run with it a little bit. And there's the uh, pair, Clint Dozell and Dan Rodaball joined at the hip since they met down in Dallas five years ago. Dan, the starting quarterback at Miami of Ohio. Clinton, AFL Hall of Famer at the position. On second down, Rodaball pumps, throws long, and Rodaball nearly makes a circus catch right in front of the scoring table, on the scoring table, I should say. Yeah, McDaniels, uh, tell you, just he'll do anything to try to get out there and catch it. He's a fearless, tough player. Has battled through the injuries. I mean, you mentioned a little bit about his story of coming on and getting on board here with the, the open tryout and just lighting things on fire, but then battling back after the Achilles injury a year ago. Wow. Just shows fearlessness You'd going never after that ball. You'd never know. How about that? But now, strategically, third and long. And Orlando had stopped them two series ago. And a big third down throw, and it's broken up. Intended for Marcus Thomas, and it'll bring up another fourth down. A little bit of the deflection there from Taylor gets a paw on that. Marco Thomas, the intended receiver. And here is a huge fourth down conversion challenge. Brought to you by Foreman Mills. Stretch your bills with Foreman Mills. The Soul were stopped on downs just two series ago and enabled Orlando to cut the lead to seven. And if they can stop the Soul here, they'll have a chance to tie this football game after trailing by 21, not 15 minutes ago. No call. Rada ball on the mark to McDaniel. First down, Soul across the 20. A huge pickup by way the to, two. Way to settle in the zone. McDaniel knowing he wanted to square up and give Dan a nice target to throw at. Dan stepping into the throw, moving the sticks. A big first down for the Soul. You don't know that how important that will you do, Tom. But if you're new to the game, that was huge. A new set of downs, that's going to burn a couple of minutes at least on the game clock and maybe lead to a two-score lead again. SK is the motion man. They'll throw short to Thomas. He breaks free along the sidelines, or no. No, he was shoved out yep. right in midfield. And shut with the contact into the wall, out of bounds, right just on the Orlando side of midfield. Marco Thomas, normally the short threat, but what... Clint Dozell likes to do is throw the other receivers long and bring it underneath to Thomas on occasion. Now remember that clock continues to run so you say hey he went out of bounds why is the clock still running it won't stop until that one minute mark so any of those kind of passes the solar they have that wide range to to throw the ball anywhere and still keep the clock running. Smith, Breen and Tivis really under the gun to protect their quarterback who throws it into the corner touchdown Marco Thomas goes long for the sole score for foods galore. 
You wonder why Dan Rodebaugh goes out there so early before games and works on every single pass, every different angle. Yeah, you get a little frustrated a couple times in the third quarter, he was off the mark, but here, you can't get any better dropping that one down, and Dan has really mastered that throw. Nice touch, just watch over the defender, right into the waiting hands of Marco Thomas. Marco Thomas now with 10 catches for 163 yards. And Dan Ronabaugh has equaled his league leading high for the season of eight touchdown passes in one game. And he's done it twice, both times against Orlando. Down, up, Freevert remains perfect on the evening and so reestablished a two score lead with 2.22 left in the fourth quarter at the Wells Fargo Center. Philadelphia trying to go out to 7-0 and on the start of their new season uh, and a critical two game road trip coming up next Tom as they go down to take on Jacksonville a dangerous team right now Tom because they've lost a lot of close ones but they're one and five and badly need a win. Well it, it's an important trip as well because any time you're on the road it's always a tough win but that Southern Division is a very very tough division. You know Jacksonville has been traditionally a tough team. And then you stay in Florida for a week. Where, Tom? In Jacksonville? We're going to be, be down in Tampa. And we uh, did the same thing last year and actually righted the ship after an 0-3 start. Spent the week down there. It seemed to bring the team together and helped us out, get things on the right track, and start us on a winning on a winning path. Came in and beat Orlando in a game we did on Comcast in the very next week. But the difference was that three-game streak, losing streak to start the season. You were chasing Cleveland all year, never caught them. And now a chance to go out at 7-0 and before you go to Florida. Freevert, will he kick it deep? Tompkins yep. has returned one for a touchdown. And we'll get a chance. Fran Tompkins caught from behind. Nothing doing. Morris will have to go 56 yards, or rather 46 yards to find the end zone from here. Yeah, Romaine is able to get in there and latch on and pull him down. That's what you want. Get on him quickly. Don't allow him to try to navigate his way through those gaps. Romaine doing a nice job of bringing him down. They'll start the clock again with just 2.12 left in regulation. Philly 62, Orlando 48. Soul averaging 60 points scored per game on the year. Their highest point total of the season was in the opener at Orlando when they scored 70. No flag, although it looked like Brian Robinson may have jumped, but he did not cross the line of scrimmage. So they didn't throw the flag, but it's a short gain for Orlando out to the 10 yard line. That clock will still run. So that's a good place. Larico using the wall to get, you don't have to necessarily drag him to the ground, get him out of bounds. That clock will continue to run. Bracken's in motion. And dropped, dropped on the near boards. That ball was there, intended for Lamarck Brown. Kent Richardson defending. Yeah, just took his eyes off it. He heard the footsteps with Richardson and Gooseby over in that vicinity. Richardson, number one, tallish defensive back. Six foot, 190 out of West Virginia. Had a good look with the Cleveland Browns. Morris. Has Brown this time on the near sidelines for a first down. And that will take us down to the one minute warning. 59 seconds to be precise. We'll take a timeout with a soul leading Orlando 62 to 48. And here is where it gets crazy. The last minute of an arena game, right, Tom? I tell you, you this is where you can't go to the fridge. You can't go to the concession stand because the scoring gets crazy and uh, you just never know. 62, 48, Seoul seemed to have things well in hand. Let's see what happens. Morris to the sideline and almost a one hand grab by Larry Brackens right in front of Ron Jaworski. But that will stop the clock. Uh, we go to the traditional timing in the final minute of each half. Seoul up by 14 points, but just 25 yards for Orlando to cover here to draw within a touchdown. Defense time to buckle down. You don't want them to get the points, but you know, this is where you kind of snuff it out. You want the defense to end the game here by continuing to bring the pressure. 
Morris has been especially effective with his legs. Joe Goosby's job is to watch him and not let him do what he's trying to do right here, and the defensive line corrals him. Brian Robinson with another sack. And it's Patrick Scott, I think, got the Patrick cleanup Scott, job yes. there as Lawrence got at his feet, but Patrick Scott was the beneficiary coming back as it slowed Morris down with, again, Lawrence has been playing a great job up the middle, and it caused the uh, delay and allowed Scott to get the sack. Number 13, Patrick Scott, 6'1", 300 pounds, Florida A&M. Moves awfully well side to side, though, for a short squatty guy. Yeah, and he's very versatile. He played a lot of edge this year, but he's also the backup at nose for Lawrence. So inside, outside, Patrick Scott, another guy that we found out as the CFL, and uh, he's been a contributor here for about a year and a half. Orlando with the Kings. Morris back to the air. Needs a completion. Has it on the near sidelines to number 14, Brandon Tompkins, who has that kick return touchdown tonight that put a charge into his Predator team. Also with a solid night receiving, he and Kendall Tompkins, both with six receptions tonight. And the ball advances inside the 15, and still 42 seconds left in the game. In regulation, I should say. Seoul have not gone to overtime yet this year. Their closest game of the season was a 70-63 win in the opener at Orlando. And they scored with 12 seconds remaining to win that one. Tompkins in motion, circling. Morris straight back, looking left. Flag down. Morris scrambling. He'll get near the goal line before he's tackled by Stevenson, but a flag down in the backfield. More than likely, that'll be a hold, and that'll come back. The center, Ryan and Case, arguing usually, his case. Usually with that delay, a more stepping up. It would have been, yeah, and that's the, the signal from the referee. A foul, legal hands to the face. Offense, number 78, 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Slow down that pass rush, Lou, because it would have been, Morris would have been in the grasp, and that'll march him back. And the important thing for the soul, it ate off a good 10 seconds. Earl Ladson, first time we mentioned his name, and he wishes we hadn't. So to reset, 20 yards needed for a first down, 23 to get to the end zone, and Coach Rob Keefe will call a timeout. 30-second timeout on the field to do some strategery here. And a timeout on the field, a time to tell you. We started to talk about the Broadwalk, Boardwalk Bowl coming up in Atlantic City on May 30th. This is really going to be a fun event. I was there. Soul.com. AC in South Jersey giving a chance to show Vegas how it's really done. I like that. I would, You know, Tom, we were both there for the... Big press conference announcement at the Tropicana. First time I've been in the Trop for the Maxwell Awards, and what a what a great time I had down there. Here's Morris trying to prolong the fun for the Preds. Steps up and then lobs it to no one. But Scotty Kindness' foods galore to Cal in the end zone. Yeah, and you saw Robinson noticing the weakness in that gap in the middle. Try to sneak through there. They got like an arm bar on him, couldn't let him around. He almost got to Morris. Morris just had to throw it away. Still... No intentional grounding. Quarterback was out of the box, for those of you keeping score. 27 seconds still remain. A lot of time if Orlando can strike quickly. And the onside kick would be a possibility in order after that. Ball at the 23. Soul up 62-48, trying to go to 7-0. and Morris has time. And throws to the end zone. Should have been a touchdown, but a flat-out clunk. I guess he wasn't expecting it. I can't see how he dropped that one. Clunk. Right on the money. A nice pass by Morris. Stepping right into that one and drop. Just a plain drop. Not even a boink. A clunk. Watch this one. Right down the, right down the pipe. Right wow. off the chest. Wow. Brandon Tompkins, who's played in an otherwise yeah, exceptional chest game. Chested that one. Should have had that. Well, one. you're not supposed to catch it with your with the body. You're supposed to reach out with your hands, and that's what happens. It'll bounce off your pads nine times out of ten. 22 seconds left. Third down and 20 for Morris. Looking long, throwing end zone and intercepted. Intercepted by Stevenson. Cutting back in midfield, he'll put it down. Flags fly, but it looks like the Soul have sealed their seventh win of the year without a loss.
the big play defense steps up for the soul again. Interception during the return, a legal block in the back. Returning team number 99. Five yard penalty, first down Philadelphia. The important thing to remember, the interception. Number 23 stepping in front of Morris for the second time tonight to pick it off. And Larico uh, should garner him the defensive player of the game award. Two picks. Just been laying the wood when it's been in his territory. He's been having a, a solid season for the soul. The soul will try to advance the ball and that will run the clock out in the final minute. You have to go forward. You can't just take the knee and Taggart does. That's positive yardage and it is another positive night for the Philadelphia soul. Orlando. No, Orlando will call timeout. <laughs> Five seconds left. Not sure why that one. Rob Keefe may be a little too optimistic yeah. about the time factor in the AFL. We'll have to wait and see. Well, it, it, the thing is, it's a clean snap. You never know. But, you know, at this point, you're two, you're two scores down. Even if they do recover a fumble and get it in the end zone, though, that'll waste the rest of the time. This should do it then for the Soul. Positive yardage, the clock will run out. The Soul will advance to 7-0 and on the season. The last time they've started out this well was 2008, and they won it all in New Orleans. The Soul will go on the road for the next two weeks to Jacksonville, then Tampa Bay, then we'll see them in Atlantic City for the Boardwalk Bowl on May 30th, and we hope that we'll see you there as well. You can get your tickets at 888-789-SOUL or go online with philadelphiasoul.com. Tom. Now for Tom Goodhines and our whole crew here, including Arena Vision's Perry Rubin and our producers and directors, Leah Swituka and uh, Jeff Moss. I'm Lou Tilly with Tom Goodhines, Cosmo Denicola, and all of the Philadelphia Souls saying thank you for watching on the Comcast Network. The final score tonight, Philadelphia 62, Orlando 48.